Like it or not? What's been in your head the last three days? Hello everyone. Wikipedia defines rage bait or rage farming as a manipulative tactic to elicit outrage with the goal of increasing internet traffic, online engagement, revenue, and support. I'll set the scene. Have you ever been scrolling on TikTok and you stumbled upon something that was so dumb or claiming something so insane that you felt like you needed to comment? I'm sorry to tell you, you're probably a victim of rage bait. Rage bait is particularly effective because it gets the silent viewer involved. So this is the person who typically their only form of engagement is watching the content. Rage bait falls under this umbrella the term of engagement bait. This is anything done specifically with the goal of getting more engagement on their content. So this could be getting people to comment or getting people to send the content to their friends, anything like that, where the main goal is to get it up in engagement. Sorry guys, the sun is actively setting. This is done because increased engagement makes algorithms happy. The algorithm does not care if this content is the scourge of the internet, if it's like the worst content they've ever seen in their life. It's getting more people to engage on their platform, which means it's also probably getting people to stay on their platform longer. You know, they're scrolling longer, so they like it. So they're going to keep promoting it. Examples of this type of bait can be misspelling words in TikTok captions. This is actually quite popular for certain types of content. And it can also be in like YouTube videos where there's clickbait. So it can be a clickbait title or a clickbait thumbnail. Maybe you've happened to notice that certain types of content on TikTok, and these are often the type of content that uses rage bait, maybe you've noticed that those captions have had misspelled words in them. This can be super common in those TikToks that have like a super overproduced feeling to them. You know, like the husband and wife, like we hate each other content or like the I'm doing something in public I shouldn't be doing. These types of videos, they really need comments to survive. So they put typos in their captions to try to get people to point them out. And that increases their comments, you know, it dries up their engagement. TikTok likes it, they're gonna promote their video more. You see, you kinda see how this like cycle goes. YouTube clickbait, I think, knock on wood, I think exists less than it did maybe like five years ago where honestly like every video I was watching had intense clickbait that you didn't even believe you just kind of like put up with. So I don't know if it's like I'm just consuming less of that type of content or people just aren't using clickbait as much anymore. Like I know it clearly still exists because I'll see it on YouTube, but I think it exists less than it used to. I hate to promote him, but I think that David Dobrik was like the king of clickbait. Clickbait are titles or thumbnails that like really over dramatize something that happens within the video or sometimes it's a lie sometimes the thing they say doesn't even happen in the video it'll be like dog saves man from drowning and the actual video will be like a 35 year old man in a kiddie pool and his like yorkie will dip its toe in the pool and the person will be like yep that's what the thumbnail was referencing don't forget to subscribe. Anyways, back to Rage Bait specifically. This is like similar to Subway Surfers, okay? Instead of having Subway Surfers, you guys get to watch the sunset. Ooh, the reason I wanted to make this video is kind of a combination of two things. First, I saw this girl on TikTok, so we're gonna talk about her and her genre of content. And secondly, I started seeing a lot of content related to Rage Bait on my own For You page that I wanna talk about. And the main like thing that kind of triggered it, the main type of like rage bait related content I've been seeing on my For You page is about Jojo Siwa, okay? So we're gonna talk about Jojo Siwa a little bit too. <laughs> but let's go back to this lady, the cleaning lady quickly first. Cleaning McDonald's bathroom for free. <gasps> the McDonald's employee asked what the f I'm doing. She left to go get her manager. I need to clean fast. I truly believe my title is not being dramatic. This is like some of the worst content I think in like mainstream internet. You know, like some of the worst content that people are consistently consuming, people aren't raising a red flag about it. They're continuing to watch it. And it's like making my eye twitch a little bit, or maybe it is raising flags, but there's still a huge percentage of people who are consuming it. Anyways, this girl does cleaning videos where she just goes into fast food restaurants that she does not work at and she starts cleaning the bathrooms like unprompted and she just like gets on her hands and knees and starts scrubbing without permission. And she does it in this very childish voice. Like her narration is very childish, acting like she has not had a developed brain for many years. Cleaning McDonald's bathroom for free. She's like, am I not allowed to do this? Is it illegal to clean here? It's like, no, like obviously you're not allowed to do this. You know you're not allowed to do this. You don't work there. These companies are open to so many lawsuits if they just let you spray these unknown chemicals around their 
place of business. She's also putting these employees, these fast food restaurant employees, she's like putting them in such an awkward position where they're having to like ask her to leave. It's very uncomfortable. You know, she's putting their jobs at risk. It's like basically asking for a repeat of the Chick-fil-A girl. Barbecue sauce? Or do you have like a buffalo sauce? No Chick-fil-A sauce? But it gets worse. This chick also cleans gravestones. A little baby was buried here. I'm gonna clean her grave for free. When I began cleaning, my dog Scout started barking, but nothing was there. Now, your first thought might be that this is a nice gesture. I can totally understand where like, maybe that's where your brain goes in the beginning. I want you to imagine you go to see a loved one, okay? You pull up to go visit someone who's passed away in your life. And when you get there, you see this girl that you do not know and who did not know your loved one spraying like neon pink cleaner on the front of their gravestone. She's got a tripod up, she's got a camera rolling and she's sitting there being like, how did this person die in 1982? Were they murdered? You know, just like talking about this person that they do not know who you care deeply about and she's like making, she's making a bit of a spectacle out of it. Sorry, I know, I feel like I am being harsh, but I think it's a relatively low form of content. It's using people, the whole form of content requires others for it to be successful. And it's requiring others who are not involved, who did not ask to be involved, who were not asked to be involved. And she's using these people to make her money. By the way, I looked it up because I did not know. I looked up how to properly clean a gravestone. The National Park Service actually has like instructions, probably because there's like so many like military monuments with a lot of gravestones. And the National Park Service says, only use soft brushes and gentle cleaners such as water or a non-ionic cleaner. Never use wire brushes, power washers, or harsh cleaners such as bleach. This girl is using a hard brush. She's using water with a pump. I guess I, I don't know what this, that's called, the, the spray water. And she's using heavy cleaners on graves of people she doesn't know like <sighs> fired up i think it would be okay if she got permission from families but she's kind of circumventing that step and i just think it's overstepping and this girl obviously knows she's doing stuff she shouldn't be doing that's why she's filming at night in these graveyards it's why she's saying in the fast food restrooms she needs to clean as fast as she can she knows she's doing something she's not supposed to be doing and she's doing stuff she knows is going to upset some people so those are the people who are going to comment and say hey this is wrong like i don't agree with what you're doing i think this is kind of messed up and then there's going to be people who are going to say hey she's cleaning a dirty restroom hey, she's cleaning a gravestone of someone who's passed away because it was covered in dirt. She's doing a nice thing. Why are you mad at her for doing a nice thing? And fighting is going to ensue in the comments. Like she has found the perfect sweet spot. What do people say? Neutral evil? Neutral villain? Neutral, you know what I'm talking about, I hope. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> she's doing things that on its face are nice. She's cleaning something. She's cleaning a bathroom. She's cleaning something that's dirty. But it's like, such a borderline like questionable thing to be doing it's such like a controversial thing to be doing that it's going to bring comments in it's rage baiting because some people are going to agree some people are going to disagree they're going to fight in the comments and that's going to increase your engagement it has this added layer of in her video she's like oh my god i shouldn't be doing this is it illegal to clean here it gives her like almost this like infantile excuse of like not being involved because she's acting like she is five years old like she's speaking in this tone where she doesn't know any better trying to like extricate herself from the situation that she is creating but she's making money off of it she's making money off of these fights in her comments and the more fighting the more engagement the more her videos are going to get clicks it's like this cycle this perpetual cycle that only benefits her it's not only sorry i am ragging on this but it's not only annoying it's honestly boring and it's like wholly uninspired we really do have an intense online obsession right now people are so insanely online and if you want to fight about it with me check your screen time brother report back so tell me if that's the type of content you want to be consuming and maybe this isn't showing up on your for you page but tell me if this is the type of content you want your friends you want your co-workers that you have to spend an insane amount of time with watching and discussing being like oh hey tom in the break room did you see the new cleaning video she scrubbed the shit out of that gravestone yikes now i want to move on and talk about jojo siwa if you would have told my middle school dance mom watching ass i would be talking about jojo siwa jojo siwa i think is like the perfect example of rage bait content themes violence strong language dramatic scenarios and flashing lights she is 
asking to get picked on. And at first I thought it was in good faith and like she just happened to be a person who like gets picked on. But now I kind of think she knows what she's doing and y'all are getting trolled. This has been on my For You page quite a bit lately, but I haven't been getting JoJo's TikToks specifically. I've been getting stitches of people like reacting to JoJo. You know, it's kind of the same vibe as like search Duna on TikTok. Austin Butler just talks like that, okay? Search Duna on TikTok. But it's people stitching JoJo Siwa's TikToks. I'm seeing the same thing over and over to the same degree of search Duna on TikTok. Search Duna on TikTok. Search Duna on TikTok. Okay, so here's a TikTok that JoJo posted. She posted it and its title says, or like its caption says, one thing about me, I will be the first one at rehearsal and the last one to leave. And guys, the threads, the stitches, they are ghastly. They are ghastly. I have seen at least three different stitches of people pausing the video on Jojo's dance, three different angles of her, like of dance move that she's doing being frozen. And it's like, I, I'm trying to be the better person. I have seen people commenting on, in the comments of the stitched video, talking about the comments, a little meta moment, the comments of Jojo's videos being like absolutely like, like I said, ghastly, just like her getting flamed in the comments on her videos. And you might feel a little bad for Jojo, I understand this, but then you realize that these people are playing into Jojo Siwa's pop locking and dropping hands. Her engagement is through the roof because people just need to spit their joke. And the jokes are funny. I must admit the jokes are really funny. Date of it, 1031 is not only Halloween, but it is also. But you have to realize that these comments are dollar signs and Jojo Siwa's eyes. You are just, you're paying her directly. Jojo posted a TikTok kind of recently of her crying in her Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. And people did have thoughts. We gotta find it. I should call my mom. I don't want her to see me crying. You're rich and famous. I'm sure you'll be fine. Crying in a Lambo, life's hard for real. Don't want your mom to see, but us is different. You know, it's like all things along the lines. I felt like I was reading mean tweets. You know what I'm saying? Like the celebrity reads mean tweets. That's what it felt like just reading those right now. But it was all things along those lines, basically. And like valid, but you guys are literally funding her Bobo mobile, okay? You are to blame. <laughs> Y'all are Frankenstein and she's just the monster. You reap what you sow. You reap what you bow. The content is cringe on purpose. Mama needs a new dance studio. A new RV to dress up like Joe Dirt. Sorry, that was bullying. That was bullying and I'm sorry. So here's my solution, conclusion time. Here's my solution. Y'all need to get a grip. I'm implementing something similar to TBYS. Okay, think before you speak. My version is TBYCOJSC. Think before you comment on Jojo Siwa's content. You're only allowed to comment if you've got a really good singer, if it's worth funding another music video. Okay, that's all I got. If you're making this type of content, be a little more original, like making videos talking about this content. <laughs> Subscribe so that I don't have to start making rage bait videos and that's a threat. Comment if I've enraged you, if you support me so that we can start getting some arguments in my comments, get my engagement up, okay? Thank you for watching. That's all for me today. Cheers, peace, love, and happiness. I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Oh God, okay, here we go. TBYS, TBYCOJSC, TBYOJSC, JSC, TBYOS, TB, TB, oh my God, TBYCOJSC, 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 TBYCOJSC. <laughs>